Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faithful Through Mission Church. My name is Nick Hensler, pastor here at the church. Good morning to everyone sitting in our pews, and good morning to everyone who is watching us online. Kayla's going to be bringing us into the presence of the Lord with some music. Just ask at this time that you open your hearts and your minds for what God has to say for you today.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are, open all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bound to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, forgives us all of our sins as a call and ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ and by God's authority, I therefore therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found, and that is only through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, as one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. that the Gentiles had received the word of God, but when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. They said. Then Peter told them exactly what had happened. I was in the town of Joppa, he said, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a large sheep was let down by its four corners by the sky, and it came right down to me. When I looked inside the sheet, I saw all sorts of, of tame and wild animals, reptiles and birds, and I heard a voice say, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, I replied. I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice from heaven spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. This happened three times before this sheet, and all it contained was pulled back up to heaven. Just then, three men who had been sent from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were staying. The Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry that they were Gentiles. These six brothers have here accompanied me, and we soon entered the home of the man who had sent for us. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, Send mes messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He will tell you how you and everyone in your household can be saved. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then I thought of the Lord's words when he said, John baptized with water, but he baptized with the Holy Spirit. And since God gave these Gentiles the same gift he gave us, when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to stand in God's way. When the others heard this, they stopped objecting and began praising God. They said, we can see that God has also given the Gentiles the privilege of repenting of their sins and receiving eternal life. Here ends the reading of the first lesson. The psalm this morning is Psalm 150, found in your green hymnals on page 289, or you may follow on the screen. I will read the other verses if you will respond with the evil. <coughs> Hallelujah! Praise God in His holy temple. Praise Him in the permanent of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him for His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the lyre and the, sh and the harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and harp. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The second lesson this morning is from Revelation chapter 21, verse 
verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down. For what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Here the end ends the reading of the second lesson. Please rise as you are able for the rest.
People are so busy enjoying the rides and thrills of life that they haven't even noticed that they're not in fellowship with God. It's not as if God isn't there. It's just that they've pushed him out of the vicinity of their attention and instead focus on the cotton candy and the thrilling rides happening in their own lives. Now that young boy at Disneyland needed to come face to face with two realities before he could get help. First, he needed to discover that he was lost. Then, he needed somebody to lead him back to his parents. Now, the Bible tells us that apart from God, all people are eternally lost. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 tells us this, All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Now, these people who are astray from God need to know that they are lost. And they need to know their way back home. This is where the Holy Spirit enters, because he is the champion of the lost and found. So this morning, we're going to focus on the purpose for which the Holy Spirit is given to us. We, when we take a look at John chapter 16, we're going to discover two purposes of the Holy Spirit. First, the Holy Spirit has a purpose of conviction. Now, just a few verses previous to our text for today, verse 8 tells us about the Holy Spirit brings this conviction. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Now, the key word convict here comes from that Greek word eleko, which means to convince with solid and compelling evidence so as to expose a wrong. The job of the Holy Spirit is to give clarity to the spiritual issues in a person's life and convince them to make a decision in regards to their spirituality. Folks, are you praying for a lost loved one or a friend, keep praying for them. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit brings a conviction to those people we love as to their spiritualness and their sinfulness. The truth is that there are many, many unsaved people walking around in a spiritual fog, not really understanding what God expects from them. And the Holy Spirit's purpose is to make this spiritual issue clear so as to shake people loose of their misconceptions about God and the good news of the gospel. Now the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit actually brings three convictions. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin by having us realize that we have a sinfulness inside of us where there needs to be an atonement. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 states this truth. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So the Holy Spirit brings us a conviction of sin. Next, the Holy Spirit convicts us of righteousness. It's the Holy Spirit's purpose to convince people that Jesus is the only perfect, righteous one who has ever lived. If we take a look at the very next verse in Romans chapter 3 and verse 24, it affirms this truth. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Jesus is the only one who perfectly measured up to God's holy standard. And therefore, he is the only truly righteous person who is able to satisfactorily stand as the substitute for the full atonement of our sins. 
So this then brings us to the third conviction of the Holy Spirit, and that is of judgment. Because Jesus is the only righteous person who God accepts as the atoning substitute for our sinfulness, God's judgment for people is subsequently based upon the acceptance or rejection of his son's atoning sacrifice on the cross. Now, Jesus states this himself back in John chapter 12, verse 48. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. So through these three convictions of the Holy Spirit, it confirms the truth stated by Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And once the Holy Spirit brings the truth of that conviction to people, they then have the choice to either accept or reject that conviction. Now, the second purpose of the Holy Spirit is to experience the Spirit's power. In verse 13 of our text for today, John's Gospel speaks of the Spirit of truth. Now, the Greek word used here for spirit is the word pneuma, which means breath, wind, or spirit. Now, we all know about the power of wind. When Lori and I drive down to visit our family down in Iowa, as soon as we cross the border of Minnesota into Iowa, you can see these huge wind turbines just to the east of I-35. Now, each of these wind turbines are able to power up to 350 homes at their peak production. And there are hundreds of wind turbines just in view from the highway all powered solely by the power of the wind. That's a lot of wind power. And it's from this word pneuma where we get the word pneumatic, which is something that is powered by air. Jesus tells us about the power of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And Jesus also says in verse 13 of our gospel text for today, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. And he will tell you about it the future. Jesus is telling the disciples that they would not have this power until the Spirit comes. So in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 through 5, Jesus commands the disciples not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father and what he had promised. And the scripture tells us this in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 through 5. Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sent you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants the disciples to remember the promise he gave them in John chapter 14, verse 18. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. And Jesus did come to them as the Holy Spirit, just as he still comes to us today. Before the Spirit of Truth came to the disciples, they were a bunch of weak kneed guys who were not about to speak up to anybody and wanted to stay in a locked room in a house. When the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, there was a personality change, and they stood up with their shoulders squared, and they immediately spoke up for Jesus. Even the Jewish rulers were made in John, and they were when they were brought before them. If we look at Acts 
chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible tells us, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Where did the disciples get that kind of power? The Holy Spirit. And just as the Holy Spirit guided the disciples into all truth, so also the Holy Spirit will guide anyone who believes in the saving grace of Jesus to be guided into that same truth with the same power. That's all the disciples needed. And that's all you need as well. The Holy Spirit can make the insecure person and the fearful person confident. Personality change is a Holy Spirit specialty. And when you allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, things will change. You just need to access that power that is available to you and be confident in it. Do you remember a few years back, okay, maybe more than just a few years, there was a movie called Crocodile Dundee. Jack <coughs> Dundee is from the Australian outback and he's visiting his girlfriend in New York City. Now there's a scene in which Dundee is walking down the street with his girlfriend and some guys jump out to rob them and one guy pulls a knife and says, give me your money. And Dundee's girlfriend screams, oh, he's got a knife. How about it? Mick Dundee isn't too impressed with a knife and says, that's not a knife. Then reaches behind him, pulls this huge bowie knife out of his belt and said, now this is a knife. The thief takes one look at Dundee's knife and takes off. What would normally bring fear did not bring fear to Mick Dundee because he he had something bigger and better working on his side. Friends, you too have someone bigger and better working on the inside too. Ah uh, yes, Mick Dundee, Mick Dundee did have a big knife. However, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 tells us that the knife of Jesus is even much, much bigger for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Folks, God doesn't want you to be intimidated out of being the person he has saved you to be. God is promising you, just as he promised to his disciples, that he would bring the spirit of truth which is the Holy Spirit. So that you are perfectly capable of doing the powerful kingdom work he has called each of you to do. The trouble is, though, that Christians are, are not using this Holy Spirit power in their lives. And so they wonder why the Christian experience is so dull or dead. The truth is, it's not because the Holy Spirit is lacking anything, but rather because people are not living in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So often the reasons why we may be lacking Holy Spirit in our lives is not because we need more of the Spirit, but rather that the Holy Spirit needs more of us. And the key to enjoying the Holy Spirit's power is <clears throat> obedience. Jesus was completely obedient to his heavenly Father. So because of this complete and total obedience, all that was his Father's is his. And when we obey the will of God as individuals, and for this church, the Holy Spirit will empower us as well. There's one more promise of the Holy Spirit from our Holy Gospel, from our Gospel text. Take a look at verse 22. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and 
no one can rob you of that joy. There's many times in our lives when we think that we are very far from being even remotely filled with the Holy Spirit. There are probably people hearing this message today who may be feeling spiritually dry and parched. And take a look again at these words from verse 22. Notice how the word will is used twice in that one verse. Jesus is promising to each one of us that through His Holy Spirit, He will be with us and that we will be rejoicing in that. And Jesus promises us that no one can rob you of that joy. What's really interesting is that there's even more to this promise from Jesus than might first be apparent. The sentence structure in verse 22 in the Greek language has the emphasis on the focus of the verse upon the word joy. Well, the Greek word used here for that word joy is the word kara, which by itself means grace, favor, and joy. However, the context of the word joy used here in verse 22 is in a direct reference to the source of that joy. Folks, even when you feel like you're in the driest spiritual times of your life, remember that the source of joy, truth, and power that is from Jesus through His Holy Spirit is with us and will bring rejoicing to you once again. And no one can take that from you. It's a promise from Jesus. So don't let the, mess, the devil mess with you and tell you otherwise. Because this is a promise from our Lord Jesus who is the Spirit of Truth. Let us pray. Father in Heaven, we thank you for the conviction and the power that is through the Holy Spirit of your Son, Jesus. Lord God, we are sorry when we do not access your Holy Spirit power and instead try to rely on our own meager and limited power. Father God, help us and give us strength to become more obedient to the words of truth that are in your Holy Word and guide us in our everyday lives through the Holy Spirit to build your kingdom here in this community, this county, this country, and to the continents. And we pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is great. Our next hymn is great God, a blessing from your throne. Still working out of the green hymn. Yet this is hymn number 185, 185. Also, the words will be up on the screen.
proclaim together the words of our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we pray for this church. Lord, we pray that you set it on fire with your Holy Spirit fire and let it remind us that you are always with us to empower us, to guide us and give us discernment. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that, that helps us and empowers us to everything that we do in our lives and in our church. Lord, in your mercy, yes. hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we are in a decisive divisive and decisive time, Lord, we know that you know all that's happening. Lord God, we pray for stability and peace within our own country, Lord. We pray for our nation's leaders, from our president all the way down to our school boards and city councils, Lord. We pray that they make decisions in accordance to your will and not their own agendas. Lord, we pray for peace within this nation. We become so divisive that we're, we're bickering and fighting amongst ourselves, Lord. And this is a time when we need to be grouping together, especially Christians, Lord. So, Lord, bring your peace, which goes beyond all understanding. Bring us your love. Put it on our hearts, because that's the way we're going to be able to bring that decisiveness to an end and bring any kind of division to an end also is through the love that we show to each other. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those soldiers who are fighting for those freedoms we have in this country, Lord. They're far away from family and friends, Lord. We ask you to protect them while they are on mission. Keep them safe, Lord, and bring them home. Bring them back home, Lord, and help us and remind us that we need to stand by them as they stood by for us, to provide them with all that they need to transition back into society, whether that's uh, a healing for body, mind, and spirit, or maybe jobs as well, Lord. We need to keep them in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for those people putting their lives on the line on our own community streets. Law enforcement, fire department, ambulance personnel, hospital personnel, Lord. Protect them while they are on shift. Keep them safe, Lord. And remind us every time we hear an ambulance, we need to pray for that situation and pray for those responding officers. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for the soldiers who are fighting on the front lines for your gospel truth. All those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation, Lord, protect them. Keep them safe. Protect their health, Lord. Protect them from any kind of human evil. And protect them from any kind of evil of Satan. Lord, please provide them with the resources they need to do those ministries you have called them to. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord God, we continue to pray for the situation in Ukraine. Protect all of those six million plus people who have left their homes to go to other countries, Lord. Provide those other countries with the resources they need to help those other people, Lord. Empower them, keep them safe, bring them peace, Lord. And we also pray for the, for the country of Ukraine itself, Lord. We need your peace to that, and then you're the only one who can bring that, Father God. Bring peace. Bring strength to the people who have left. Bring strength especially to the people who still remain, all those people who are still trying to survive. And give help to those who are remaining. Lord, give them strength. Give them protection, Lord, and bring your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they'd like to make this time, please go ahead and say that. Lord, we pray for your healing. Even amongst all of us, Lord, there's, there's people who we know that are 
suffering from maybe just colds and, and uh, asthma or just the allergies coming up, but there's people who are also suffering from a stage four cancer. Lord, you are the God of healing. And we've seen your miracles in this congregation over and over again. And because we have seen it, Lord, we trust in the provision of you still being able to do that for those we have on our hearts and minds at this time who are in need of your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of you. Trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And all of you. Please share that peace of God with one another. We'll take our offering at this time. I thank you in advance for your grateful and gracious hearts. Anyone who's watching us online would like to provide for the ministries here at Faith Lutheran Mission Church. Ever sit at the bottom of the screen, if you could write us a check and send to us, we promise it will be for building the kingdom of God. Also, PayPal is available.
and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body, given to you for the forgiveness of sins. So, whenever you eat of this bread, do this in the remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took a cup of wine, he gave thanks to his father, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup of wine is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. So whenever you drink of this wine, do this in the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray together the words that our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We celebrate communion today, and you have a choice. You can use the regular wheat wafer. Uh, also, we have a gluten-free wafer in the white dish in the middle of the plate. And you have a choice between <coughs> wine and white grape juice as well. All who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior are welcome to his table. Come. His table is ready. <laughs>
by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. If you please rise for the benediction. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his everlasting strength, peace, and protection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Kids, come on, head on down for uh, Sunday school. The rest of us kids of God have got one more hymn to sing. And that is, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. Still working out of the green hymnal yet, number 501, 501. Also, the words will be up on the screen.